Hey everybody, my name is Casey Ferris. I make videos here on YouTube and I don't have this set right. Hey everybody, my name is Casey Ferris. I make videos on post-production here on YouTube. Today we're talking about the planar tracker inside of Fusion, what the heck it does and how to use it. And I get a lot of questions about tracking and especially planar trackers and planar transforms and things like that. So I hope this clarifies things for you. Let's jump in. I don't know what that was about. Okay, so here I have this convenient shot of a green screen with tracking markers here on this laptop, a perfect candidate for tracking things. And let's say we want to replace this screen. This is something perfect for the planar tracker in Fusion. How it works is if we go to our media in and I'll hit shift spacebar and type PLA, that should bring up our planar tracker and I'll hit add. If we run this media through the planar tracker, that's what it's going to be looking at for tracking. By default, when we start clicking on the viewer here, it's going to draw a shape that's going to define the area that we track. So we want to track the screen. And so I'm just going to just select this big area here. I don't have to be that exact. We just want whatever we want to track to be inside of the shape. Now that we have our shape drawn, we can go over to the inspector and there are a few different options here. We're going to leave operation mode for track. We're going to switch that in a second. And the first thing we need to set is our reference time because I just kind of stopped this on a random frame in our shot, which happens to be a great frame to draw our shape on, but we kind of got to tell it what frame we did that on. So for reference time, let's just hit set and that will set that to our current frame. And this is the image that it's going to use to kind of compare everything else to. This is like its starting point. And under tracker, we'll leave at point. Under motion type, you can pick all different kinds of types, but for something like this, that we're going to replace a screen and we have this moving camera. We're gonna select perspective. Everything else is fine. And let's hit this track to end button right here. And that will track it throughout the shot. I can go up to hit go to go back to our original frame here. And we'll track this backwards. A lot of the time when you track something, it's nice to start in the middle because that's going to be pretty similar to the beginning and the end whereas the end might be a little different than the beginning. For instance, if you have a camera dolly that goes from left to right, you might wanna start your track in the middle so that you're not trying to track things in kind of a weird perspective the entire shot. You kind of get the average perspective. We have our tracking done, now what do we do? Well, for a shot like this, what we're really gonna want is a corner pin. What that does is it takes an image and it puts its upper left-hand corner up in our upper left-hand corner of our screen, the lower left and the lower left, and so on. And it's really kind of just a fancy trick to kind of fake the perspective and we can kind of lay something over our screen and it looks like it's really in that kind of 3D world. So let's get an image. Let's go up to our media pool. And obviously I'm going to use this cat image because freedom. So how do we put this cat image over our original footage? Well, if we select our planar tracker and we go over to our inspector under operation mode, instead of track, now that we have everything tracked, Let's select corner pin. Once we select that, it's gonna have this little red outline, and this is where we define where each corner is. And then it's going to do fancy science and keep that corner right where it's supposed to be throughout our track based on our tracking data. So let's zoom way in here, and I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger than our screen. I'm gonna cheat a little bit, because nobody's gonna know. Now that I've told it where the corners should be, all we have to do is tell the planar tracker what image we want to put in here. So down in our nodes, we can take this media in too, which I'll rename as cat mi. And I'll take the output here and bring this into the green input, which is our image input for our planar tracker. And now it's going to put this cat picture onto our laptop and it's gonna move along with the shot perfectly. Pretty rad. Now let's get into a couple of the gotchas. Number one, whatever you put into this planar tracker, it's going to place the corners right where the corners are in your footage. So if you have a image that is a different aspect ratio than whatever screen you're trying to replace, you need to basically resize it to be the right aspect ratio before you put it into the planar tracker. Now this one happens to work out because our cat is 1920 by 1280, which is a pretty common resolution for something like a laptop. But what if we had something like this handsome boy? What if we were to bring this handsome man in there? What's gonna happen is when we connect this, it's gonna squish it down and look real bad. So we can resize this a bunch of different ways. We could select this and add a crop, but the controls are eh, maybe a little weird. So if we wanna do 1920 by 1280, 
there. We can adjust our offset here. And then if we want to zoom in or anything, it's a little bit awkward, but you can do it. What I like to do is just merge this over a background. So I can take just a background node like this. I'll select it and go into the properties in the inspector under image, uncheck auto resolution, and just make this 1280. And that's kind of the mat that we're gonna put this on. And I'll just take this cat picture and merge it over our background. And now I can adjust this and kind of move it on top of our background and it's going to automatically size this to our background because that's how merges work inside of Fusion. So now we've basically done our crop, but it's a lot easier. We have a lot more control. And now we can take this output from our merge and put it into our planar tracker. It doesn't quite work, but we've done kind of our reframing and now we can add our crop and set that to 1280. And that will make sure that we crop the edges. And at any point I want, I can kind of move this around without having to worry about the janky crop controls. So that's how you do something like a corner pin. Now a planar tracker can actually do a lot more than just a corner pin. A planar tracker can also just kind of stick things to an image to kind of just move it around with the camera. So I could do something like just select one of our tracking points here, go over to our inspector, and instead of motion type, let's just say translation. That's just moving it up and down and left and right. And this is just a little bit easier way to track things than using our normal point tracker. So I'll hit set and track it forward. Go, track backward. And now we have this motion tracked if we want to stick something to the top left side of our screen here. Maybe something like a call out, right? Some kind of graphic that points something out. But the cool thing is that I don't really need to run everything through this tracker. I can actually make a separate node called a planar transform. So with my planar tracker selected, I'll go over here and select create planar transform. And that will add a node called planar transform pretty much wherever it wants. And sometimes it's over another node and it's very frustrating. But once you find it, you can use this to move anything that you want along with your image. So let's say we have this piece of text. We'll call this screen. We can merge this text over our footage and it doesn't move with it until we put our planar transform here. I'll just hold shift and drag this in between our text one and our merge. And now we can select our text Maybe put that like right here. And now this is kind of stuck to that corner, but it's not a corner pin. It's almost like it's glued to this one point in our footage. So a planar transform is kind of just all of the tracking data put into another node that you can run things through to match the motion of your shot. I can even do this for something like a mask. So I can grab this and grab a polygon mask, drag it down here, and maybe I'll just kind of mask out the edge of this laptop here. And I can copy and paste our planar transform and run my mask through that planar transform. Let's set our mask to inverted. And now we can track our mask so we can put stuff behind our laptop. Pretty cool. So yeah, there's a whole lot about the planar tracker. I hope this helps make some sense of it. Hope you can kind of understand it a little better. Very, very useful node inside of Fusion. Hey, thanks for tracking with me. I'm just going to end the video there.